Hi friends, no playing today, but I promise our next video, we're gonna start working on improving our speed. And in the video after that, I've got another new song to share with you that I found uh, yesterday that I really love that I've been playing. And uh, I think you'll be excited about it too. So we'll cover both of those things by the end of this week. It's my promise. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about the keys of instruments and a little bit about whistles. So just a couple of minutes, bear with me. I had a, a, two great conversations with people in our little growing community here. Um, one, a trained uh, classical pianist and the other, someone coming to the whistle uh, to learn to play it, who knows a, a reasonable amount and was joking about, uh, oh, you're talking about different keys. Obviously, we're going to get into some half holing. That's like ways to play flats and sharps. And yeah, at some point, we're going to talk about half holing, but that's that's not really how the whistles were designed for us to work, as for us to play. See, I and my other friend raised in a classical tradition. So when I'm playing my saxophone, I, I was trained to play the music as it was written. And if I wanted to play in another key, then hand me the music printed in the other key. And after a while, I learned to transpose the music into another key. My instrument was designed to play in any key at all. And that's why it's got so many little buttons all over it. But the whistle, you see, the whistle wasn't designed that way. My whistle is a low D whistle. I have a high D whistle as well that I don't really play much, um, as I've told you before. And that means that my low D whistle can play tunes that are written in the key of D and the key of G, the major keys. I don't want to muddy the waters by telling you the minor keys it can play in as well, but put that on the back burner. If I have a whistle that's in the key of C, then that whistle will play tunes written in the key of C major or F major. If I have a whistle in the key of E flat, then that whistle will play tunes in the key of E flat or a flat, and that list just goes on, but that's an example. And this is why learning alternate fingering is not really our first need. Our first need is to learn to play the whistle. And this is also why alternate fingering is an exception to the rule. Yes, we're going to learn that. We're going to talk about it later. But it's, it's not something you're going to do in every song. You see, you'll, you'll notice people coming to sessions. They're not just bringing their one whistle. They might be. And then their intent is only to play um, in songs that match the key of their whistle. You'll see them bringing many whistles. They bring a D. They bring a C. They, they, they bring an A. They bring a number of ones. And what I have to wrap my brain around is my D whistle when I cover all six holes, I'm playing a D. If I own the C whistle, when I'm covering all six holes, I'm playing a, you guessed it, C, an E flat whistle. Guess what I'm playing when I cover all six holes? Yep, an E flat. That's something I'm gonna have to get used to. And that's also why you own many whistles. So you don't have to play every note under the sun on your low D whistle. You own more than one. I have no intent on buying another whistle in the immediate future. I see myself doing that at some point, but I need to improve what I'm doing currently on my D whistle. And so we'll work on that later in the future it felt like this should be another brief conversation out of the one we had yesterday on the scales that we need to practice. So um, keep practicing, keep practicing, get ready for improving our speed with our whistles. And until next time, this is Scott Shade. Happy low D whistling.